Good afternoon and welcome to the bustling metropolis of Taipei located here in Taiwan. We've had an amazing couple of nights here in Taipei. Really, really amazing. Very impressive city to be honest. It's kind of where like ancient uh, culture meets absolutely next level high tech uh, modern uh, skyline and all that sort of stuff. Very impressive city to visit. Been very impressed as one of the few tourists that appear to visit Taipei. It's very easy to get around. It's got some amazing attractions, whether that's uh, Taipei 101 or the amazing temples, um, plenty of other museums, that sort of stuff as well. Even the Taipei Zoo I thought was really impressive. So stay tuned on the channel for all that sort of uh, stuff in the coming uh, weeks. But anyway, today's going to be a big day. Actually, concludes our one month travel around Asia where we've gone to Sri Lanka, we've gone to Malaysia, we've gone to Thailand, also finish up here in Taiwan. So yeah, this evening we're flying to Kuala Lumpur, flying on AirAsia X on an Airbus A330 aircraft. Flew on a similar AirAsia X aircraft on the way up from Perth to KL. It was a pretty good experience to be honest. Um, no frills, but it was um, cheap and cheerful and er everything that I expected was delivered. So yeah, really hoping uh, AirAsia are going to replicate the same experience today. And then yeah, a little bit later on in the wee hours of the morning, we're going to connect on to another AirAsia flight uh, to head back to Perth. So yeah, it'll be good heading back to home base for a little bit now. It is great travelling around, but it does get a bit tiring as well at times. So good to head back to home base for a little bit. But yeah, without further ado, let's now head to the Taipei Taoyuan Airport now. Before we head to the Taipei Taoyuan International Airport this afternoon, just a little bit of flight information about today's route. So it's going to take just over four hours. Going to be heading out over the South China Sea. Pretty well all over ocean today's flight tracking between the Philippines and Vietnam and then down south to Kuala Lumpur. Great circle distance should be around 3,239 kilometers. Getting to Taipei Taoyuan International Airport, you'll find it actually is quite a considerable distance from downtown Taipei. It's actually in the nearby city of Taoyuan, which is approximately 40 to 50 kilometers from the center of wherever you're traveling in Taipei. To get there, you'll find Taipei has an excellent both underground and above ground uh, train network. So yeah, um, just got to get a local Banyan line a train uh, today to Taipei main station, thereby I can then connect up with the very efficient uh, Taoyuan Airport MRT Express service which will take me um, all the way to the airport in about 35 minutes. For your information the service costs 150 new Taiwan dollars which is approximately $7.70 Australian. You will have to however purchase an extra ticket if you're transferring to and from to another destination at Taipei Main Station. I really enjoy this high speed uh, railway journey out to the airport. There's two types of services you can take. I've taken the express one which only takes a couple intermediate stops along the way. However you can also get a transit service which takes about 15 minutes or longer. That stops at every uh, stop along the way. So yeah, in a nutshell, it's well worth taking the Taoyuan Airport MRT. It's going to be a lot cheaper than getting a taxi or an Uber, especially considering such considerable distance here, getting to the airport in Taipei. In fact, I've actually done a full comprehensive review on the Taoyuan Airport MRT, so be sure to check out that one on my YouTube channel as well. 
Anyway, we now have arrived in 35 minutes as promised at uh, Taoyuan International Airport now. So without further ado, you'll find the MRT station is in the basement of the airport. So yeah, we're just going to head up the escalators now. That's going to take us directly into the uh, check-in area of the terminal. So yeah, without further ado, let's get checked in for our AirAsia flight to KL and hopefully with a connect uh, fly through service all the way through to Perth. For your information, Taoyuan International Airport is by far the largest and busiest airport here in the whole of Taiwan. It's absolutely the main international gateway to Taiwan as well. Immediately prior to the pandemic, it was the 11th busiest airport in the world in terms of international passenger travel with over 46 million annual passengers. It's also a very busy international freight hub as well, coming in at around the 8th busiest in the world. Very much a key transit destination between East Asia and North America. The main uh, international hub for airlines such as China Airlines, EVA Air, and also Starlux. Check-in for AirAsia services can be found towards the rear end of the terminal near row 12. Arriving just a tad under the recommended free hour prior to international departures here for AirAsia in Taipei. No, so checking counters, why not exactly dead, don't look overly busy either. So it's looking like it's going to be a reasonably speedy start to our journey here today. There is a small uh, selection of self-serve kiosks if you want to check in that way at the airport. But for the most part, you're still going to have to line up to at least drop your bags. And in some cases, uh, they're going to need to check your documents in person anyway. Anyway, after a quick 5 to 10 minute wait, check-in is very efficient today and flying to Perth, they were able to check my bags all the way through to Perth and also hand through my second boarding pass. So it seems like AirAsia's fly-through service is going to work seamlessly once again today. So that's really good. And yeah, flying back to Australia there is no document checks required, obviously being an Australian citizen. So very, very easy checking in for today's flight. Outbound immigration here today in Taipei is very speedy and efficient. Maybe it's because I'm a foreigner and the line for foreigners seem to be a lot less. But yeah, I was really even directed to use the e-gates, which I was a little bit surprised, but I was pretty impressed nonetheless, as I hadn't actually used one coming into Taiwan. But yeah, so free immigration and then uh, free security, very efficient as well. So yeah, thumbs up to Taiwan International Airport in this regard. Before my flight today, I've got an hour or so to kill. So let's use my Priority Pass membership to visit one of the several Plaza Premium lounges here that you'll find at Taiwan Airport. So yeah, Plaza Premium lounges, I've always found them to be very trusty, reliable, pretty good all-round uh, quality of lounge brand that you'll find here quite frequently at airports in Asia Though you also increasingly find them in Australia and elsewhere throughout the world as well So Priority Pass got me in today, but a variety of different uh, Lounge schemes will get you in the door as well as this also paid entry And also if you're flying business class on certain airlines that don't have their own dedicated lounge here so yeah, what more can I say about the Plaza Premium Lounge here at Taoyuan Airport? It's definitely one of the bigger Plaza Premiums I've been to, but yeah, it still feels fairly spacious nonetheless. There's a good range of buffet food on offer, both Western and Asian food as well, so that's really good. And there's a pretty decent uh, drink selection as well, including a Taiwan beer on taps, self-serve taps, that's really cool. There's also red and white wines and some other various tea and coffee and other options as well. So that's really cool. 
In terms of lounge design, there's plenty of varied seating options. Really like the booth style seating, definitely offers a bit of privacy for relaxing and working, so that's really good. Not much in the way of natural lighting in this lounge, no tarmac or window views, low artificial lighting does give a good uh, ambience to it anyway. Anyway, um, really good lounge, this one here in Taipei. It's just a really quick visit today, but yeah, we have to now uh, make the considerable walk to our gate for our AirAsia flight to Kuala Lumpur now. Upon leaving the lounge, it's a reasonably considerable walk to our gate at B2 today. So I definitely recommend allowing yourself 10 to 15 minutes to get to the gate. But luckily there won't be any further security checks required. This end of the airport is a really cool place for plane spotting. Lots of interesting aircraft and airlines departing from this part of the terminal. Also some plenty of freighter action in the background as well, including China Airlines 747s. We've got a Tiger Air Taiwan, which is the last remaining airline to carry the Tiger Air brand after it uh, ceased in Australia in 2020. So this uh, a320 uh, Neo is traveling to Da Nang. Here we've got a Starlux, which is the newest uh, airline in Taiwan. Uh, almost brand new A321 Neo that's traveling to Ho Chi Minh City. As I was saying before about Taiwan Airport being a top 10 airport in the world for international cargo traffic. You can really see that in the background here with plenty of China Airline 747 cargo aircraft. And yeah, here's our Scoot 787-8 flying back to Singapore. And most importantly, here's our ride taking us to Kuala Lumpur this evening. It's an Airbus A330-300 aircraft. 10.5 years of age at time of taking this flight, delivered direct off the production line in Toulouse, France to AirAsia X in June 2013. Registration number 9 Mike X-Ray X-Ray Juliet. Looking at the size of the queue, it's looking like it's going to be a nearly full flight this evening to KL, I'm thinking. But yeah, without further ado, boarding pretty well gets away on a time. And yeah, welcome on board our Airbus A330 aircraft. On the A330, which is very much the stalwart aircraft in AirAsia X's a long haul fleet, you'll find a total of 382 seats, which 12 of these are their premium lie flat uh, business class uh, product and out the back of the bus you have another 365 fairly stock standard looking seats configuration out the back is in a free free configuration however uh, towards the back the last five or six rows is a bit of a less uh, configuration as it narrows out to a two free two configuration my AirAsia flight bundle did come included with standard a seat selection. However, to get one of these seats at the back where it does taper off to two seats at the side, you do have to pay an additional surcharge. I think it's around six or seven dollars. But once again, I've opted to do this for this AirAsia flight. I think it's very, very well worth it indeed, especially if you want a window seat. In terms of the seat themselves, they're a fairly uh, stock standard black leather seat, but they're pretty comfortable to be honest. And the best part is uh, seat pitch is around 32 inch, which is very respectable, especially for a budget carry in my opinion. Seat width is around 16.5 inch, so that's not too bad either. So overall, the seating on AirAsia, it's a pretty darn reasonable in my opinion, especially for a budget carrier. Now as we take a few final moments to appreciate that huge 
fleet of China Airlines cargo aircraft on the other side of the runway. What better time now to sit back, relax and enjoy this very interesting taxi out to the runway and our takeoff out of Taipei Taiyuan International Airport today. Once we're firmly in the air, I'll then offer my thoughts and opinions on today's AirAsia in-flight service and some of the other features and amenities of the Airbus A330 AirAsia aircraft. So yeah, what better time now just to sit back, relax and enjoy our amazing takeoff out of Taiwan today. Now that we're well and truly approaching cruising altitude and cruising south out over the South China Sea, let's have a look at the tray table here. It's a fairly standard uh, fold back tray table in the seat pocket in front of you. You've got a good variety of in flight uh, literature, including the usual uh, safety card and in flight magazine. In the seat pocket you also find the Santon in a flight uh, menu, very good range as it usually is, the Santon in flight of food and beverage offerings. You got your hot meals are around 22 Malaysian ringgit or around 7 Australian dollars, very good value indeed, well, I definitely do recommend you pre-order these online for the hot meals before your flight, otherwise um, there's a high risk you might not actually be able to get them on board. Anyway, apart from that, you can definitely buy a range of snacks and drinks. There's a very good range. Prices are very, very reasonable indeed. And you also got combo mix and match deals. So some of the cheapest in-flight uh, uh, food prices I've definitely seen on an airline. Always really enjoy my uh, in-flight menu on AirAsia and today is absolutely no different. While many airlines are increasingly doing away with in-flight duty-free sales, or at least um, migrating these to pre-order online, AirAsia very much still has plenty of duty-free options. So yeah, if you want to buy duty-free on AirAsia, it's definitely a place to do it. And also they have some great uh, AirAsia branded merchandise as well from you know, key rings to polo shirts to uh, model aeroplanes, all that sort of stuff. So if you like airplane merchandise, AirAsia is definitely a good airline for that. Um, there is also a separate alcohol uh, menu as well. Prices I find are generally very reasonable compared to back home in Australia. A beer is going to cost you around $5 or 15 Malaysian ringgit. 
or three of them will cost you 40 or about 13 Australian dollars. Well, you can usually only get alcohol on AirAsia X, not AirAsia Malaysia flights. Now as we have a look at those amazing views as the sun sets out over the horizon over the South China Sea, let's have a look at my included meal that came with my bundle tonight. So I got the Thai basil chicken with rice which came with a bottle of mineral water. And I actually had this meal on the flight from KL to Colombo and yeah, once again it was absolutely delicious, absolutely was longing for more. Air Asia's food, um, their meals are just really, really tasty and they're really affordable. And once again, Air Asia absolutely delivered their goods. So very good uh, hot meal today on Air Asia. Definitely recommend if you are flying long haul to definitely pre-book um, one of these meals. So yeah, even if you are trying to save a few dollars, uh, for going a meal is really not uh, worth it on AirAsia. The meals are tasty, they're done cheap and they're affordable. It's going to be cheaper than probably having a meal at the airport. So do yourself a favour, pre-book a meal online. You're not going to go wrong with AirAsia and their in-house uh, catering. Always hits the spot from my experience. When it comes to having a cheeky bevy on AirAsia X, I'm always going to take a Kieran or a Tiger over a very overpriced, low carbohydrate, uh, mid-strength beer that costs twice as much on an Aussie carrier. So yeah, you certainly can't go wrong having a beer or two on AirAsia X as well. In terms of entertainment, there isn't really anything on AirAsia X as I've already alluded to before in past flight reviews with them. Very much is a BYO setter. There is in-flight magazines that might provide some light reading entertainment for you. But apart from that, it's very much um, left to your own responsibility. I just recommend uh, loading up your own laptop or tablet with a few TV shows, movies, saying like that and that will pass the time just fine. I usually just um, use YouTube Premium, uh, download some TV shows or documentaries from there. You'd be really surprised how much uh, free content is actually available on YouTube. So yeah, that, that's definitely what works for me, and yeah, it definitely helps kill the time very easily. Anyway, as I enjoy that beer and those magnificent sunset views from 40,000 feet, it's very much a fitting way to conclude my uh, amazing one month traveling around Asia. Thought I'd just offer a few preliminary thoughts on today's flight before it gets dark and we make our descent into Kuala Lumpur International Airport. But yeah, in short, it was another very solid experience with AirAsia X today. Definitely a lot busier flight uh, today compared to my flight going up from Perth to KL. So I think that probably took the uh, slight edge off the enjoyment of the flight, but it was overall still a very um, solid, although pretty uneventful flight. So yeah, very much um, AirAsia, very much uh, what you pay is what you get. But yeah, it was a cheap and cheerful experience today. And yeah, really, really hard to find too many faults um, with the service I received today relative to the price I've paid. Anyway, it's now dark outside and we're within the last hour of today's flight through to KL. So yeah, once on the ground, I'll offer my final thoughts and Aussie Jet Setter score index for this flight. But for now, what better time just to sit back, relax and enjoy our lovely uh, descent into Kuala Lumpur International Airport this evening.
And just like that, it's about 8.25pm at a local time and we've arrived into Kuala Lumpur International Airport, KLI2, home of AirAsia to be precise. And what more can I say about this evening's flight across from Taipei through to KL? It was a really uh, reasonable flight overall with AirAsia, very much um, got what you paid for and I don't mean that in a cynical way, I mean that in a really positive way. Um, once again, AirAsia, they delivered on that uh, business model, uh, you pay is what you get. So really hard to find too much of an issue with AirAsia tonight. Even though it was a really full flight, um, I still thought the crew um, had a good handle on everything. So that was really, really good. So yeah, just as with my previous AirAsia flights on this particular trip throughout Asia, really happy with their business model, really like how you can customise the flight to be um, as budget and as low key as you like, or you can really uh, max it out and customise it to get all the extras you like. So yeah, I um, definitely uh, got a lot of the extra extras, so that really worked well for me on this evening's flight. Anyway, we won't get too carried away in offering my overall assessment for tonight's flight just yet because we've got to get to our Aussie Jet Set Out score index for this flight. So first things first, let's kick it off with ground handling. And obviously I'm on a fly through all the way from Taipei to Perth. So this is really the sum of two flights for this uh, score. But what more can I say about this flight? The check-in process was very efficient in Taipei and they assured me all the fly through connection service would work just seamlessly and I can assure you that my bags did arrive uh, from my other flight connecting uh, from KL through to Perth later in this night. So that's really good so I'll give them a solid 16 out of 20. Certainly no complaints in the ground handling department. Next up we've got crew and in-flight service and once again pretty hard to fault AirAsia on this evening's uh, flight. Perhaps a little less attentive than the flight uh, coming up from Perth to KL but I must admit it was a lot busier flight nonetheless. But yeah, um, everything like my pre-booked uh, meal was all served quite promptly and yeah, they, I really get the sense AirAsia have the whole uh, service protocol um, really worked out. So yeah, really hard to fault here. I will give them a solid 16 out of 20. Next up we've got entertainment and coming into this flight I very full well know that there was going to be no in-flight entertainment offerings on AirAsia X unless of course you included the in-flight magazine as a form of entertainment. So yeah, I think it would be unfair to really dent uh, AirAsia's score by marking them down for the lack of entertainment. So yeah, I will award myself um, a 15 out of 20 for providing more than adequate entertainment with shows downloaded to my own device. So yeah, really um, was more than entertained for this flight. Next up we've got aircraft and seating condition. I thought this 10.5 uh, year old Airbus A330-300 still looked in pretty good Nick. although I'm sure it's certainly been very much well utilised by AirAsia X over the years. And yeah, at the end of the day, I reckon the seating on AirAsia X is pretty darn reasonable for a budget carrier like 32 inch seat pitch. That's pretty darn respectable in my opinion. And yeah, the seat itself doesn't have many of the extra bells and whistles that you might expect on a full service carrier and you don't have IP screens or anything like that but at the end of the day in terms of purely the seat and specifically focusing on a leg room like you could actually end up on a Qantas 737 on longer flights than this between um, Australia and Bali and you'd have less leg room than that. So yeah, I reckon AirAsia does a pretty good job in this regard. So I'm more than happy to give them a 15 out of 20. 
Finally, in terms of value for money, it's fairly marginal with the flight today. I paid 525 Australian dollars. That's a one-way flight all the way between Taipei and Perth, obviously via Kuala Lumpur. It actually wasn't the cheapest option available. Was initially going to buy a Batik Air, but they keep uh, declining my credit card for some reason. Could have actually flown with Batik Air and had a similar level of inclusions for around about $100 um, less. But nonetheless, um, to be honest, the uh, timings of Air Asia did actually uh, suit me a little bit better. And yeah, it was still uh, much cheaper than other options such as uh, Malaysia Airlines or Singapore Airlines. And interestingly enough, Scoot was several hundred dollars more than Air Asia again. So yeah, it wasn't as cheap as Batik Air, but it was um, certainly a lot cheaper than the other full service carriers. So yeah, $525 could have been a little bit cheaper, I guess, but that's all the way to Perth. But yeah, certainly could have been more as well. So I'll give them a 13 out of 20. So in handing down my final Aussie Jet Setter score index for this flight, all in all, it comes in a very respectable 75 out of 100. So once again, I thought AirAsia did a really good job of replicating my very positive experience with them flying them up from Perth to Kuala Lumpur about a month earlier when I started this magnificent journey around Asia. So yeah, it was a pretty um, uneventful flight tonight. Not a huge amount to report about. But those sort of flights are often the good flights in this day and age. And yeah, they really delivered on everything I expected and everything I paid for. So really hard to complain with AirAsia tonight. Well, this flight review is now coming to an end. Very much only halfway through my very long 18-hour journey back to Perth. We've got about a five-hour uh, lay over here well into the early hours of tomorrow morning where we've got about a 1.45 a.m. flight to Perth. So yeah, be sure to stay tuned uh, in coming weeks and months for that flight review if it isn't already up on the channel. But yeah, for now, thank you very much for watching today's flight review. Really hope you have enjoyed it and found some useful information from it. If you have, don't forget to hit that like button. Leave your comments and thoughts down below. And also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button if you haven't already. So you won't miss the AirAsia flight review to Perth that comes after this. And all my other flight reviews and destination content for my recent trip to Asia and also elsewhere around Australia and the world. But yeah, for now you can also visit my dedicated uh, Instagram and a Discord uh, pages for the channel. Put a link to those in the uh, description below as well for fans and community of the channel to engage with my channel. You also visit my website aussiejetsetter.com.au for the latest flight reviews, industry news, destination guides, frequent flyer hacks and more. But until the next flight review, thank you very much for watching today. I hope you enjoy it and stay safe wherever your travels might take you.